Joel chapter number 2. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Revelation 11, 15. Zion is the hill and the mountain in Jerusalem. The focal point of the Bible is Jewish. It's not American. It's not German. It's not English. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. So, the trumpet was was called for assembly. An alarm is, you know, pay attention. You, know, you got a fire alarm. You got an alarm in your car to tell you, hey, something's wrong. I need your attention. And there were silver trumpets in the law that had certain tones that meant calling the assembly. Uh, it was a time of a feast day. The north tribe shall go, the south, etc. So Joel chapter 2 starts off with, hey, pay attention. Shut up. Hear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the land, Israel, tremble. That's not a happy time. That's not a time of mirth. And it's not the land trembling. It's not an earthquake. It's the people. For the day of the Lord, 26 times in the Bible. 2 times 13. The day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. So, there are people who are looking for the day of the Lord, and the Bible says, you better sound an alarm, and you better start trembling. And we read in the previous chapter. It's not a good time. Well, it's a day of clouds. That's not what the rapture is. The rapture says we shall meet in the clouds. It didn't say cloudy day. There may be one cloud. But this is described as a day of clouds. Darkness. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes the second advent, there's no sun and there's no moon. It's a light at the end of the heavens. A day of darkness. <laughs> Revelation 16, 10. Egypt was in a day of darkness. And of gloominess. Does that sound good? So you better not hope that when the rapture happens, you know, you're looking for a dark and gloomy day. In life, that's every day. A day of clouds. Now let me let me go over here real quick. We don't use we usually just study the chapter. Let me go over here real quick and look up something. First Thessalonians chapter four says. Alright, it says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught together with them in the clouds. Okay, it's plural. But there's several types of clouds. There are beautiful clouds out there. There are clouds, hey, look at an elephant. And the clouds probably look down, look at an idiot. These are clouds that, storm. no, they can't be storm clouds because there's no rain, thanks to Elijah. Yeah, but they probably look like I would think it's just even this. Black clouds. You can't even white. you can't even describe what these clouds are going to be like. Remember, it's a time of terror. It's a time of, of wickedness. It's a time of Satan. It's a time of. I bet you these clouds could be felt. And thick darkness. Now, I know some people, there's somewhere out west where you go down in a cave and you go down deep in the earth. And they turn off the lights and it, it, it is just wickedly scary. I never, don't ever do that to me. But that's what Egypt felt. A darkness that can be felt. You know, you say you cut fog with a knife. But this right here. This is under the Antichrist. This is under Satan. God says, okay, fine. You don't want my light? You don't want the gospel? Boom. Sun turn off, start. Hey, you're not going to be able to worship Baal at the beach no more. You'll get that black tan. It'll just be black everywhere. I don't think we're going to finish this chapter. Uh, Thick Narius. As the morning spread upon the mountains. And I've seen that from California. In San Diego. 
there's just nothing like uh, you know being a New England boy. You grow up, you look at those mountains. Here comes the sun. It, it's just beautiful. But as the more as the morning spreads upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. Now we broken away from the dark clouds and the darkness. We're seeing a morning light in the morning. The train at the end of the tunnel is coming. There, and it says great people and a strong. Hold on. By the way, you're, you know, listen, uh, I was going to say Larkin. Your, your Schofield Bible is a great Bible, but his note under part two of chapter two, you can erase it. It's not, this is not Armageddon. As the morning spreads upon the mountains, I know we ain't going to finish this chapter. A great people and a strong. Remember that. There have not been ever the like. Remember that. When we finish, when we do this chapter. Neither shall be any more after it. Remember that. Even to the years of many generations, Matthew 24, 21. We are now looking at the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just got multiple verses here. We could spend the whole time doing all the verses. Okay, ready? That lovable baby. That was born in a manger. To bring peace. My eyes have seen the coming of the glory. Oh, shut up. Love of God. And the daisies. And the Easter bunnies that will be preached pretty soon. A fire devoureth before them. This ain't hell. This is pre-hell. This is a flamethrower, we'll say. As right now, we're, we're reading. We'll say, this is a, this is a flamethrower. And behind them a flame burneth. Notice it did not burn the great people and strong. That there have not been ever a light. Neither shall there be any more. They're not involved with this flame and fire. Before them is a fire devoureth. Before them. Get that. And the flame burneth after them. So here comes this flamethrower. Here comes a group of people, and behind them is just flames. Didn't the earth get enough flames in verse 19 and 20? Okay, if it burns up a third of the trees and a third of the grass, and there's no, I wonder what this flame is burning. The land is as the Garden of Eden, as, not is. Big deal with an A and I. People get in trouble with the eye. Before them. Now that's interesting. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them. We just read that four insects are going to devour. We just read that a fire. The vine dries up. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree, and they're just withered before them. A, and behind them, a desolate, desolate wilderness. Behind these people, that great people and strong, have not been ever like. Neither, see, before them goes the flamethrower. Behind them is flames. Before them is this wonderful, great city. And behind them is the wilderness. Something has happened with this group of people. Okay, ready? Yay! And nothing shall escape them. Don't build a bomb shelter. 
It's not going to work. The appearance of them. Who? Verse 2. A great people and strong. Number 1. There have not been ever the like. Number 2. Neither shall be any more after it. Number 3. That's to them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. Giddy up. They're horsemen. So when you see these people, you see the horses. You ever see a, an old Civil War, an old Napoleon kind of battle, warfield painting? You see horses and these little tiny things on top of them. And as horsemen, so shall they run. So they got some kind of horsepower on horses. And they run. Don't trot. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains. They're not in chariots. They're on horses. This is how fast they're going. Man, you talk about horsepower? These horses are booking. They sound like chariots and they don't have chariots. On the tops of mountains they shall uh, on the tops of mountains shall they leap jumping hurtling so what's one of the things that you do with horses that shows you show them jumping see out of the King James Bible you're imitating somebody you and your horse shows are imitating somebody I wonder who these people are I lost where I was. Appearance of horses, and so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble. The unsaved, Matthew 3.12. Uh-oh. Now we're getting down to something. We're looking at the Gospels now where Jesus says, Separate the stubble from the wheat. We got some kind of judgment going on here. The stubble's being burnt up. The grain has been gathered. The wheat has been has been uh, put up as a strong people set in battle array. Genesis three twenty four, Zechariah fourteen one through three, Isaiah thirty one four through eight. Before their face, the great people are strong. The people shall be much pain. Not these horsemen. The people that are before these horsemen. Pain. Didn't they get enough pain in the tribulation? All faces shall gather blackness. Can I say this and not be racial? All the wicked men that deny Jesus Christ and reject God are going to be black one day. Black with burnt. That's not going to be the blackness you want. You know what the opposite of that is? Snow, white, God. Come, let us. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. You don't want to be white as snow? I'll make you black as coal. I, I, not, I'm not being racial. I'm just telling you what, what's going to happen. You're going to be like a log that's been sitting in a fire. You're going to be like a coal that's been in a fire. You're going to be black. Some people are going to get their dream as white people. They're going to be black one day. All right. They shall run like mighty men. Now we're back to the horsemen again. Stupid on them. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Warriors. The God of love. Remember.
they shall march every one on his ways. They shall not break their ranks. They're going to be united. First Chronicles 12, 22, Joel 6, 5. We're going to have a walk one day. It's not going to be to the left or to the right. We're going to walk just as Christ performs us to work. Straight. Neither shall one thrust another. We're not going to stab each other in the back here. Like we do now. We're going to be in unity with, with God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 19, 2 Thessalonians 1, 7, Isaiah 13, 1 through 5. They shall walk everyone in his path. When you come back as a Bible-believing, saved Christian under the blood of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to have your path set to the millennium. There's already a prescribed path for you to come back to this planet in victory of the Jews and in darkness and blackness of the lost. That's your path. And when they fall upon the sword, ouch. Now look at this one. They shall not be wounded. Second Thessalonians 5, Revelation 6. There's your body not ever getting wounded again. There's your body suffering no pain. It didn't say that they can't stab you. But if they do, like the Hollywood movie, pfft, get out of here. You see where Hollywood gets it from? You know that hero who keeps getting stabbed, he doesn't feel it and all that? He's got 200 gallons of blood that's spilled out, but he's still alive. Joel chapter 2, the Christian. How's that? You ever wonder if we're going to get those in those recon motions? And here we are, we get stabbed with a... Wait, wasn't I supposed to feel something? Uh, behold, I make things new. No more pain. No more suffering. Hey, you want to do that again? <laughs> they shall run. We're not going to finish this chapter today. You want to see something funny? You want to see something absolutely hilarious? This is March 11, 2016. I'll give you something hilarious. Watch me run. I will have an asthma attack. I will die of a heart attack and not be able to breathe. Now watch this. They shall run to and fro in the city, Jerusalem. I can't even run from here to the bathroom. Now, we just read as a family, because we read the Bible every night. So church. Have you ever thought about, you get in your head about, you see, Sunday school teachers, listen to me. you got to teach those children the Bible, not other crap. All right? Take the crap away. What's the story about Joshua and the man with Jericho? What is it? They walked around the city, right? How many miles was that? Was it all straight path? Was there mountains? Was there stubble? Were there rocks? I mean, you ever think about that? Have you ever seen a map of Jerusalem? The, 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 the wall of, of King David's time? I'm going to run through that. And if there's monkey bars, I'm going to stop and play with them for a few minutes. Because I'm going to have my childhood back. I used to love the monkey bars. I can't do that today. If I were to take my daughter and show her how to play baseball, take her out the field and hit the ball, and you know try to run the first base, I won't make it. They're going to be visiting me in the hospital. They're going to be sending me get well cards. But the Bible says, this is me, let me tell you, this is born-again Bible-believing Christians. I knew a guy who was in a wheelchair. He lost his he lost his leg. I don't know how, I don't remember. And he used to tell me all the time, he goes, I'd be walk I was a new Christian. I'm gonna walk through the streets of gold. And I used to look at him like, You're crazy. What's wrong with you, buddy? All right, whatever. Fruity fruity. That's it. That's what I thought of the guy. But when I got in the Bible, I realized what, the, what God's going to do for it. Here's a guy I know that's in a, in a wheelchair. He's going to not only walk, he's going to run. He's going to run upon the city. 
They shall run upon the wall. <laughs> I can't even climb a fence. I'm going to run upon the Do you know how high those walls are? And it doesn't say ropes. It doesn't say get the gaffling hook. Is it quite possible that we're going to be like Superman? We're going to be able to just walk up that wall? Hey, how you guys doing? In Jericho's time, the walls had to come down. In our time, we're just going to climb up and over. You see where they get this stuff from? Somebody show them Joel chapter 2. Hey, you see this? See this over here? Why don't you do a couple cartoon characters when somebody does this like this? You'll make a lot of money. Do it. Call him a superhuman. They shall climb up upon the houses. Hey, <laughs> I have a hard enough time being on a ladder scared of heights. I hope when the rapture happens and I look down, I ain't gonna have that fear. Ooh-wee, I am scared of heights, and you're telling me I'm gonna jump up on a wall and I'm gonna climb a house. Without a ladder. You imagine, oh, Jesus, let me get the stencil ladder out of, out of this guy's garage. Oh, man, look, Jesus, he ain't got a stencil ladder in here. Can we go down to Home Depot first? No. We shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Matthew 24, 43, 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, Revelation 16, 15, Matthew 24, I think that's 29 or 20. Revelation 6, 12, 8, 12. What on earth is that? Joel 2, 10. Jesus shall come as a thief in the night. We're going to be coming as thieves. We're going to pop right into your house. Hey, try shooting us. The sword won't hurt us. You can have all the guns you want. You ain't going to do us no damage. Why would we do that? Because didn't it just say... Where is it? Where was it? I missed it. Here we go. It says, none shall escape. Where is that? In verse 3 at the end, and nothing shall escape them. We're going to jump in your house. Oh, Jesus, here he is. Doesn't the Bible tell us we shall judge angels? We shall judge people? The earth. Look at this one. Oh, and the sea. Yeah, I record. The earth shall quake. Matthew 24, 7, Revelation 6, 12, 11, 13, 16, 8, 2 Samuel 22, 8, Isaiah 24, the earth shall quake before them. We're going to cause an earthquake. <laughs> the people were told to tremble, verse 1, and we're going to cause an earthquake. The heavens shall tremble. Here comes Jesus. Imagine the holy God of all, Jehovah, and he's coming down angry. Don't you think everything's going to get a little upset? And it says, the sun and the moon shall be dark. That is at the end of the tribulation period. And then you speak about the morning coming up, the, the, the sun that comes, the second advent. Shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. you imagine what that's going to be like when there's absolutely no light, and you're not going to have fluorescence? Your solar energy is not going to work. You ever, you ever get that when you get up in the middle of the night to use the potty or it goes you got a night light and you're still scared you know you're gonna maybe somebody put something in the way you ready you ready Jehovah Witnesses the Lord capital L capital O capital R capital D we're gonna see this in a minute we're actually gonna jump over to another verse the Lord now, who we've been reading about? We've been reading about people, great people and strong. There has not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it. The Lord shall utter his voice, 
before his army. Who's the army? The great people and strong. There has not, none been like it. Neither shall be any more after it. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that execute his word. Get that. Get that. Get that. For the day the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Isaiah 13, verse 3 and 5, Revelation 6, 17, Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Now let's go over to Revelation 19. We, we have to go over to Revelation 19 to get this chapter. Revelation 19. We just can't leave you hanging. Revelation 19, and we'll start in verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Okay, matches Joel. There's horse, but there's one. There's one horse. He that sat upon it, sat upon him the horse was called capital F faithful and capital T true. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. Didn't he, didn't liken us to didn't liken those men in Joel as an army, troops. So here is somebody who's faithful and true. They're making war, and he's got an army behind him. His eyes were as a, what's that expression you saw in Joel 1 and 2? Flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew. Do you know at the second advent of Lord Jesus Christ, no one's going to know who Jesus is? You want to shock How many churches are in America? If you were to step outside when the people come out and, and pull a child of God and say, hey, tell me any story about Jesus. There are people right now in America you can stop and they don't even know who Jesus is. Never mind the birth in the manger and the angels singing. No man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God, John 1.1. 1, 1. That's Jesus Christ. Joel chapter 2 called him capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D is called the Word of God, capital W. He's called capital faithful, capital true. So when you declare that Jesus is not God, you are an outright liar. We're not done. And the armies, that's Joel chapter 2, which were in heaven, read verses 19, 1 through 10 about the church. Follow him upon white what? Chapter 2 of Joel. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Why don't they recognize us? Man, we're just a big white glare. We are a sword to the eyes because it's been dark. There's been no light. And here comes, oh man, it, what is that thing? And when I preach a message sometimes on the street, uh, uh, John chapter 3, I call them cockroaches. Because when that light comes back in the second advent, they're going to want to run. Uh, Army, go in that house and see if you can find anybody. The armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. So we're going to ride horses one day. That's the only animal I can find in heaven. And after this, you don't find any animals in heaven. 
I don't know what happens to them. Clothed in the fine linen, white and clean. Now, if you look at verse 8, to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. That's us. I'm Saint Stolly Hayward, but I ain't Saint Stolly Hayward because I'm going to get a new name. I don't know what my name is. Only a church would tell you that that vain and liars that a saint is a dead man. Right now they're talking about sainthood and uh, that, that Teresa woman there. Really? Have you read her life? They haven't. Keep going. Ain't worth talking about her. White and clean. Isaiah chapter 1, 13 or 18. How am I made white? By the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the gospel. Ain't me. You put a white outfit on me, brother, I just step out the door and Dirk says, here he is, go get him. Now, wait a minute. It says we're going to run around, we're going to jump on we're going to jump on walls, we're going to jump through houses, and yet we're still going to have a white raiment. That's impossible. That's a miracle. And yet Jesus Christ will have blood on his. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Matthew 13, 30. And with that, with it, he should smite the nations. What did Joel 2 say? And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. You're not going to be able to vote for him. Come November, uh, this was the first Tuesday, whatever it is, you're not going to vote Jesus out of office in the millennium. You sure ain't going to replace Jesus Christ with an ordinary man that will lie his way to get to the head office. Praise God. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to elect Jesus. He elected me through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when I was elected by the predetermination of God knew already what was going to happen. I'm not talking about Calvinism. I am elected because I said, God, choose me. Okay, you're chosen in my son. Go to sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nation. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. He shall tread the wine press of the fierce. Well, all the wine is gone. All the grapes are dead in Joel chapter 1. All the crops are gone. The caterpillars are happy. they got a big old smile on their face. So what is all this that burning? What is he burning? What is he tramping the grapes? Men. Are they going to beat Jesus? You can't. They have no strength. They have no, they're weak. They're, they, they haven't been eating. They, they, there's no sunlight. They ain't got no vitamin D. Wine press and the fiercest and the wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Back to Joel. So we'll go back to Joel chapter 1 again. I'm uh, 2, excuse me. That's. Verse 2, in the day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds, thick darkness, as the morning spreads upon the mountains. Here comes the sunlight. Spread upon the mountains, a great people and strong. Those are the people following Jesus. So you know what you are to Jesus? You're great and strong. Right now we're weak and outcasts. There has not been ever the like. There ain't going to be nobody like you ever. We're not even liking the an angels, and angels never been redeemed. The angels never suffered problems like we have. <coughs> the angels have never believed in the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. They've seen him. I haven't. Neither shall be any more after it. There's going to be nobody like the church of Jesus Christ. Nobody's ever going to be like his bride. Even to the years of many generations. A fire, a fire devours before them. Revelation 19. The Lord Jesus Christ. 
his eyes. Behind him a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them. I don't understand that because it's destroyed for chapter 1. And behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, nothing shall escape them. You ain't going to have anybody hiding from Jesus. The appearance of them, that's the great people, is as the appearance of, there's the horses, and as horsemen, no, it's plural. We don't become one person. We don't become one bride. We're still groups of people. Show us how they run. We're going to run. The horses are going to run. Giddy up. Like the noise of chariots upon the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire. We read that in Revelation 19. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. That devoureth the stubble, the Lord Jesus Christ. As a strong people set in battle array. That's the army. That's us. Before the, their face, the people shall be much pain by Jesus. And all faces shall gather blackness. You're burnt. They shall run like mighty men. That's us. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march every one on his ways. They shall not break the ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. Again, like I said, you ain't going to backstab anybody. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. No more pain. They shall run to, they shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows. I don't mean Microsoft. Like a thief. Imagine calling us thieves. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and moon and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their sign. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Revelation 19. For his camp. Army camp. Ever see pictures of the Civil War and the Revolutionary War? You got the little tents and all that. And when you go see the Civil War uh, you know, reenactments, there's tents. For he is strong that executed his what? Revelation 19. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? How's that? And it's not going to be Gentiles, he says, going after the nations. Only those Gentiles that help the Jews. Now, wouldn't it be funny how God works? If we run into the houses and the windows. Get this. We just read. We just read tonight as a family. We read about the harlot Rahab. Imagine we run the road. Say, you guys help the Jews. Come on, come here. Jesus, these people protected the, the, the Jews. All right, just put them over there. Let me finish. Let me finish the nations. You just saw the story of Rahab in Joel chapter two. We go in there like didn't Joshua tell the man? Go in that go in that house and bring them out, her mother, her father. There are people who are going to be spared by us because their reaction to what they did to the Jews. What did Rahab do? How was she saved? She helped the Jews. Now isn't funny how God had us as a family to read Rahab, and here we are in Joel chapter two, and you saw Rahab. Is it Joshua and Jesus, Jehovah saves? Aren't they the same? There you go. So we're going to run in. We're going to find these people in the house and say, Hey, I heard from my master, my lord, my husband, that you protected his people. Really? We did? Well, we'll take care of that in a minute, but you did. Wouldn't it be funny if the testimony would be that maybe there's some Jews in that house still hiding? But we just read about Rahab. 